everyone. Okay, so the question has been asked about creating a donut chart with 14 equal slices or pieces. So um, my method of doing this is quite similar to um, a lot of the ones that have already been posted, but yet it's also a little bit different. I've put together this video for you and I'll show you how I do it. So now the first thing you're going to want to do is to do a little bit of setup on your page. I'm using a standard US size page, 8.5 by 11, and I'm going to enable the rulers here. So we'll go, I'll go window, bars, rulers. Now my rulers and my setup here is in centimeters because of course I'm in Canada and we're using the metric system and if you're somewhere where you're not using the metric system you may want to change and adjust these measurements to suit your own taste. Now that the rulers are enabled we are going to you are going to enable snap to objects. Click and drag from the vertical ruler to bring a vertical guideline on your page and if we just carefully and slowly move it you will see your cursor turn to the magnet icon and if you look really carefully you should see a little red dot in the center there. This guideline is now snapped to the center of the page. Now one of the other methods posted used a star to set up the slicing lines in a similar fashion. Um, my method's pretty close except I'm using a polygon rather than a star and I'm going to actually put my shape that I'm creating inside the polygon. So make sure you want quick shape star and up here you want the polygons button but not the stars button. And we're going to set the size here for 14 sides. Now you'll notice that it only goes up to 10. That's okay. We can just simply click. We'll type in 14 and we'll hit enter. A lot of Zara's drop down boxes are like that and will allow you to type in a custom size or custom value. All right, so now this gives you the guideline and we're ready to create the, the polygon. So I am going to use a radius creation and I'm simply going to click and you'll notice as I'm dragging it up I can turn it and I'm just going to turn it so that we've got it so that you have a point on the vertical guideline at the top and a point on the vertical guideline at the bottom. Now we're going to take this and I'm going to pull it up and you'll notice now that the snapping guides are showing both vertically and horizontally to indicate that the polygon is now snapped to the center of the page. Alright, so this is one, one step almost completed. Now I'm going to adjust the size of this polygon because this one is actually pretty big and I forgot to hold down the control key while I was creating it so it's not quite perfectly sized. So I'm going to go up here in the width box and I am going to make this 15 centimeters here and this one is going to be also 15 centimeters here and because I'm basically changing the ratio values, the aspect ratio values here, I'm going to undo that lock, hit enter, and now I'm going to lock the aspect ratio again because I don't want to be accidentally skewing things as we go along. So now this gives us our polygon and it's centered in the page. Now we're going to turn this into a guides object. You'll see over here in the page and layer guide, we've got a guides layer. When we drag the vertical guide onto the page, this automatically created this guides layer. 
and I have layer one expanded. So I'm just going to click on the quick shape and just drag it and drop it onto the guides layer. Now we've got our guide object and our guide line. At this point, if you wish, you could even save this as a template. You could call it something like donut chart template or whatever you desire. So now let's create our donut chart. But before I proceed, I'm going to now lock these guides in place so we can still snap to them, but they're not selectable. Now I'm going to go over here to the quick shapes. I'm going to drag an ellipse. I'm going to hold down control this time and click and drag and I'll just create the ellipse. I'm not going to worry too much about the size just yet. And we're going to pull it until it snaps to the center. Okay, so now we've got our guide snapped to the center and we've got our ellipse snapped to the center. Now I'm going to show you a method too of being precise in the sizing on this. So let's say we wanted our donut chart to be exactly three centimeters thick. All right. So I'm going to take this ellipse and I am going to go up here and I'm going to click here and I'm going to make this one 12 centimeters. And this one, 12 centimeters, and hit enter. So now we've got a 12 centimeter ellipse. And I'm going to go control K. And you'll notice over here at the page and layer gallery, we've now got two ellipses, one on top of the other. We'll make the top one pale magenta so we can see the results of the next operation here. And I'm going to size this one down. We want a three centimeter wide pie chart. I'm going to make this one three centimeters smaller. So we'll go nine centimeters there, nine centimeters there, enter. Now, because we lock, because you lock the guides, you can simply marquee select these, control two. And that gives us our donut shape which is perfectly and properly centrally aligned. And I'm going to make this pale magenta so we can see what we're doing with the lines and the rectangle shapes that we're going to make in the next couple of steps. So I'm now going to show you how to slice this and how to actually determine the width of the gap you want between each piece. So I'm going to start with the straight line tool and I'm going to start up here and I'm going to start at this point here and just drag and let it snap and it snaps from here to the top point of the polygon to the bottom point of the polygon and it's snapped along the the uh, horizontal or vertical guide. So now I'm going to go up here in the drop down box and let's say we want a four point gap. Now I could go up into the units and if you really want to do this in centimeters or, or another unit you can change the units. I'm just going to leave this at points. I'm going to make a four point gap which makes a kind of a nice gap in there and I'm going to now continue taking my straight line tool and I'm going to go like that and you should be able to see it might be hard in the video but as I'm doing this each one is is snapping in place. Like I said, it might be hard to see. All right, once you've got all your lines done and you've got them the point size that you want to create your gaps, then you can go to your selector tool. Now, 
egg showed us a very clever way to select all your items by color. I'm going to show you how to do it using the page and layer gallery. You see the top line is already selected in the, the page and layer gallery. I'm simply going to hold shift and there they are. They are selected. Just shift and a click. And I'm going to right click on these lines and from the context menu I'm going to select convert line to shape. So now I've got rather than seven lines I've got seven shapes here. I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the pink donut underneath and again I'm going to hold down control and I am going to hit the two key seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the next and final step is simply to go arrange, break shapes, and you will see over here in the page and layer gallery, we have now got all of these shapes nicely separated. They're all individual shapes. And if I go like this, you'll see down here I've got 14 separate individual shapes. And that's basically all there is to it. So there you have it. Donut chart, the angel eyes method. Thanks for watching.